5.17 a.m. loading up to get a broken bow and this is the lifestyle of landscape photography is that you get amped up because you're going on a shoot and when you go to bed you think oh I'm only going to get like five or six hours of sleep but you only end up getting three because you're so wound up that you can't sleep at all so now it's time to grab coffee and hit the road try to wake up here this truck actually smells like butter this morning yes I said butter hey everybody and welcome back it's so good to see you again here this week today I'm doing something a little different I want to take you on the road with me on an early morning outing to Broken Bow so you can see behind the scenes how I approach landscape photography so grab a cup of coffee and let's see how this little adventure plays out You're watching my channel that's dedicated to my journey in landscape photography. Now whether you just love photography or you're learning photography, please consider subscribing to my channel because I'm just getting started on my journey. It's all part of the landscape photography adventure. That's what it's all about. Taking risks, venturing into the unknown, doing things that just don't make sense to the rest of society. We're making coffee while everyone else is peacefully sleeping and it's so early we can see our reflection in the kitchen windows because it's pitch black dark outside. And we're stumbling around with our coffee and we're fiddling with camera batteries and bug spray and heavy tripods loading up into a vehicle and hitting the road. And why do it? Because sometimes, and certainly not every time, you get a massive reward for your effort. But at the very least, and almost every time, you end up with unexpected surprises. I went to the grocery store a few nights ago and got some groceries. No big deal, right? Well, on the way home, a pack of Kerrygold butter slid out of my bag and politely hid itself under the seat. And it's been 100 degrees around here, right? So. I get in the truck the next day and I see this little perfectly shaped pack of Kerrygold butter that's been cooking in 100 degree weather under that seat. And I think, oh no. And I smell the butter right away. And when I go to pick up that pack, it's literally an empty little box. There's nothing in it. All the butter had melted and leached out of the corner and is now in my floorboard. So it almost smells like I'm drinking bulletproof coffee, but I'm not. This is just black coffee. But hopefully, either way, it can wake me up this morning because I did not sleep. And I've got Cole filming me this morning. Apparently, he got better sleep because he arrived just on time and I'm dragging. So. Let's see how this goes. So this is landscape photography. Getting up at 4.30 in the morning, leaving at five o'clock to go to a location that may or may not yield you any shots at all. But we're going out to Broken Bow this morning to try to reshoot a location that we shot earlier in the spring where bald cypress trees are out in Lower Mountain Fork. Now the problem is that sometimes they generate hydroelectric power. So we're going to see if there's water coming over the retention wall, we'll have to pull the plug and go to a different location. But that's the way landscape photography is. You do all this, you get up, you drive an hour and a half, you miss out on sleep, and you may or may not even get anything. But that's part of the fun of it as well, is just the adventure and trying to get something. Hopefully we'll have some fog. Maybe they won't be generating power. Bald cypress trees with shafts of light is what I'm envisioning coming down behind it. And we'll see. We'll see if we get it. Broken Bow is about an hour and a half from my house in southeastern Oklahoma. In order to get any kind of action on sunrise, we have to leave pretty early but it became real obvious that this morning we didn't leave nearly early enough and Blue Hour played out right in front of us. 
Okay, so another part of landscape photography is indecisiveness. As we're driving north, right now, it's blue hour and there is an epic high cloud on the horizon. And I just don't know if I'm gonna be able to resist shooting the sunrise on the lake with this cloud. This is the type of clouds that landscape photography is made of. And look at how the sun's gonna undercut that cloud. I have to go to the lake to try to get this sunrise shot and then go over and do our bald cypress later because the bald cypress is down in a valley. So maybe we can get there still before the sun comes up over that ridge. Now it's a scramble to race against the clock and I don't recommend doing that. You gotta get to the location way early. We should already be set up ready to shoot this sunrise right now, not chasing sunrises. But under the circumstances, sometimes if you see conditions, you just gotta go for them. So scratch that. There's not enough time to make it to the lake. There's traffic and we're just too far away. So we're getting skunked on that deal. However, we do have drones. So if we can make it to our original location in time, we may still be able to take some shots from the air of this amazing epic cloud with the sunrise. So let's see how this goes. Stinks that they're generating power right now. We would have perfect conditions down in this stream, but instead we have a torrent of water coming on us. The cool thing about having a, a drone is it's really like having a tripod that goes up to 400 feet. So I was able to get a pretty cool sunrise shot, but not of the water like I really wanted. And they are generating power. So we may have to scrap this location. There's no fog, the conditions are not like we wanted. So this may be a bust, but that's just the way it goes. Okay, so one thing I've learned is that what we do as a craft is pretty conspicuous. You know, when most people get out of the car at a state park, you see the usual things. You see coolers, you see snacks, chairs, maybe a rod and reel, some hats and bug spray. But when a photographer gets out of the car, we've got tripods and big camera bags. We've got cameras with lenses that are telephoto that people just are drawn to. And what if we have a drone? Like it's over as soon as you get a drone out because you're gonna draw a crowd. And that's okay. I mean, people are interested in this stuff. They don't see this stuff every day. And so you have to kind of be nice to them. You can't just be like, dude, my light's falling apart over here. I would love to chat with you, but I gotta go. No, you gotta be nice to people, obviously. And that's exactly what happened to us on this morning. Right when we're running out of light, we don't have enough time. I didn't allow enough time. Then the park host from this Lower Mountain Fork Park comes over to us and he's just curious about what we're doing. He sees our drones. He sees all of our gear. Well, the questions come and naturally the conversation progresses into why on earth do you have all of this gear? And I have to pretty much disclose, look man, as much as I would love landscape photography to be my career, I do this professionally and I've got these cameras because I shoot commercial work for advertising. I'm an advertising man. Well, it comes out that this man happens to have an advertising gig that he may need some help with. So are you kidding me? I'm, of course I'm going to talk to this man about a possible gig. So the, the sun's just coming up like a rocket by now and the light's falling apart. But I have a great conversation with this man and that's one thing I have to say about landscape photography is you just never know what's going to derail you or who you're going to meet along the way. After our nice little conversation though, I quickly snapped back into landscape mode and I knew we needed to hit that trail and hit it fast. Take me down to shining waters, towns of grit and pride. Now from Google Maps, I had noticed this little lagoon looking spot that looked to be only about a hundred yards down from the park, which was good because that was pretty close. But our conditions were just severely wrong for shooting this location. 
Broken Bow Lake is a deep water lake and you can usually depend on a little bit of fog even in the summer because the temperature of the water coming over the spillway is pretty cool. There's even trout in that stream. But this morning, the sun was already up, there was no clouds, it was harsh, and all of our fog had just been snuffed out. Now I apologize that I didn't capture the audio from my behind the scenes footage in the water. Although the microphone I was wearing and the receiver were both enabled, the actual recorder batteries died, which was laying on a rock in the dry about 25 feet away and I didn't notice that it died as I was out there. So my apologies for that. So as a quick recap, I waded through the water using my tripod as a stability stick as I'm slipping and sliding on this, this slick, mossy rock and trying to just keep myself and the camera from going in the water. And I'm indecisive, I'm going from place to place looking for compositions and I think something's going to work and then it doesn't really work and then it's too harsh, but it was just an absolutely beautiful morning, crisp September morning reminds me so much of September 11th and you know the exact type of light that I'm talking about blue sky and these bald cypress trees were literally glowing against that sky especially when I had that circular polarizer in play and I found this one little place I want to show you this this shot something kind of cool happened as I was waiting around I found this one little location where you could actually see through the water into these little glowing pebbles that the sun was piercing through the water and illuminating. Now I can only see those if I turn the circular polarizer in such a way that it cut through the glare on top of the water. And that was awesome. The only problem was when I did that, I lost that dramatic blue sky that was behind those bald cypress trees. So it occurred to me, what if I just do a simple composite and put those two together and use one shot where you can see through the water into the pebbles, do another shot where you really get the peak polarized light behind those trees. And that's exactly what I have here. So let me show you a little bit of how I went about putting these two shots together. Okay, so what you see here is I have both photos pulled up in Photoshop. The first one I shot is this one where I've got the polarizer turned so it cuts through the glare and you can actually really see all the little pebbles where the sun is illuminating those. Now over here is the second shot where I rotated the polarizer and you can just see what it did to the sky. Now I explained in one of my earlier tutorial videos how Photoshop works in layers so if we click on this document right here you can see the background is over here. So I can literally click on this document and drag that whole layer on top of this one and it automatically goes on top of the background. Now because these were shot from a tripod that was locked down, the illusion is no movement whatsoever. It's almost like we don't have to drag or try to align these because they're just automatically perfectly the same. So what I'm gonna do is make a layer mask. If you look at this little square with a circle in it that is called a layer mask. That's the easiest way that we can control this. So what I'm going to do on the top layer is create a layer mask. You'll see this little white layer mask pop up over here and then remember this rule. White reveals black conceals. Okay so anything now on this means that we're seeing the entire document edge to edge because our layer mask is white. So in order to conceal that, we have to cover some of it up with black. So all I'm gonna do is grab a gradient tool. I'm gonna to change that to a radial gradient. I'm gonna make sure that my foreground color is black. And then I can simply go over here to my document and I can start to sort of erode or reveal the parts of the file that I want to see below. And I kind of like seeing some of that blue sky, but you can see if we just keep doing this, we reveal more of those rocks. And so I may just try to find a happy medium. Let me just minimize this so it's not distracting us now. But this is my, my document, and I can actually reveal more of the corner if we want to see a little bit more of that rock. And even check that out, I see a little bit more of that blue sky reflecting on that part of the water, which I think is kind of cool. So. Ultimately, 
the composition is stronger than any one of the independent photos if we put the two together. See, this one has the dull sky, and then if we hold shift, we can click here and hide that layer mask, and I feel like that's got just kind of some boring foreground. There's not really anything compelling there. But when you combine the two, now we get the detail from the rocks, we get the deep blue of the sky, and I really feel like we've improved that composition. So if you just kind of get in one of these battles of choosing, do I want to have either or, my suggestion is just to capture both, especially with reflections, because then you can always go in Photoshop and use Lightroom, use the tools that we've talked about, and combine those two to make a stronger composition. So that's a little glimpse into a photography outing that I feel like really fairly represents what landscape photography is all about. Sometimes you get out there and you have the perfect conditions and you can take amazing shots. Other times you get out and do everything right and you just end up with horrible conditions and harsh, harsh lighting and you don't come away with anything. No matter what, you really can't lose. You're out in nature, you're spending time with God, you're finding untold discoveries, and sometimes you even meet amazing people that you would have never met otherwise if you'd just stayed in bed. Now, sometimes you're gonna get out there and you're gonna find amazing conditions and take home a portfolio piece that you're really proud of. And other times it seems like no matter how hard you fight for it, you're not even gonna get a shot you wanna show anyone. But my rule is sometimes you shoot and sometimes you scout. Because if you're out there, you're probably gonna find some location that you can just kinda of chalk down as a little star on the map and say, hey, if the conditions are right, this location will offer something. So do I think it's worth it? Absolutely. So if you've enjoyed this video, do me a favor and click subscribe and click that little bell so that you'll know every single time that I go live with a new episode. Click the like button, tell your friends, I'm checking off all the boxes here. But one thing I wanna encourage you to do this week is to plan a little adventure outing for yourself. Go through the tools, get on maps, get on all trails and find a place that you haven't explored and then set your alarm insanely early and just go for it. I promise you, you won't be sorry that you did. And then share those photos with me. Share your questions in the comments below. And if you do go get groceries, I would um, recommend that you look under the seat just to make sure a pack of butter didn't fall out because as you are on your adventure, uh, it's just not pleasant to have that smell lurking in the car with you as you drive, okay? So until next time, good luck out there this week and let me know if you have any questions and I hope we can all get out and enjoy God's creation with childlike wonder. I'll see you again on the next episode. Have a great week. And if you just haven't had enough of me this week, here come two more episodes from my channel. Thanks guys. See you next time.